Good morning, descendants of Atlantis. Today I'd like to talk to you about a video put out recently by Ancient Architects Channel uh, called The Primordial Mound of Egypt Revealed. I think this video has a certain great significance in that it reveals something to us. Um, he talks about a site uh, on the Giza Plateau called Gebel Ghibli, and uh, it's kind of like a little island area out in the desert, which probably has caves and other places inside it which have never been properly uh, explored and which need to be. And so he then went back in time and raised the water level to see what it would have looked like around 10,500 BC, circa. And this uh, uh, Gebo Ghibli area then is an island in the River Nile. Now there's also, uh, as he demonstrates and shows an image of, and as uh, has been talked about by previous um, investigators, there's a causeway uh, between Gebel Ghibli and the Giza Plateau. And the causeway apparently used to be much taller and probably much bigger and probably wider is my guess. And my belief is, and I've had this theory that I've put out there for quite some time, that the ancients would have built on both sides of the River Nile. There's absolutely no reason they wouldn't have. If we go around the world and look at these different cities, here first we have Bern, then we have Miami, then we have New York, then we have Shanghai, then we have Venice from the sky. You can see that they always build on both sides of the river. Have you ever known, have you ever heard of any major city in the history of planet Earth where they did not build on both sides of the river? It defies all logic to think the ancients only built on one side of the river. But the River Nile originally came almost up to the pyramids, up to the end of their causeways, and then it slowly uh, migrated east over the years, and as it did so, it undermined and destroyed the pyramids and the structures on the east side of the Nile. And then over time, it would move on, and those pieces of stone and rock and rubble would then have been mined and used by subsequent cultures to build. And that's why we don't see it today. I think that the causeway that connects the Giza Plateau to Gebel Ghibli, it was left there because the Nile moved from west to east, so it didn't undermine that. But there was probably a causeway going from Gebel Ghibli to the east side of the Nile as well. But because the river Nile moved eastwards, it undermined the base of that. It became rubble and was later mined away. I think that causeway probably had multiple purposes. Um, number one, it was just for basic foot traffic. And number two, they could the ancients could move uh, stones uh, back and forth across it. So like the uh, white casing stones on the Giza pyramid uh, supposedly came from the east side of the Nile. They could have used that to move them across or move equipment and people and whatnot. It would have been their land bridge. And I think probably another purpose, as discussed in my videos and how the pyramids create electromagnetic energy, was there was probably some kind of cable or physical connection between the, the east and west plateaus, the pyramids there, to create that, um, uh, that battery, that earth battery, that huge earthen electromagnetic uh, voltaic pile, because you would have to connect them to create that battery. So I believe that's what uh, was happening there. Now finally, I want to talk to you about this very important image here mentioned in Ancient Architects channel. And it's an image of the primordial waters and the goddesses Nun and Nanette pouring out the primordial waters. I'm probably saying their name wrong. But I think we can all agree that oftentimes in history, the true meaning and purpose of images gets lost especially when you're talking about thousands of years of time passing. Now, I believe this image was probably copied from a much earlier image and copied from that and copied from that, etc. I think it's very old. And I propose that this image 
means something different, something much more profound. And it relates to my uh, videos on how the pyramids generate electromagnetic energy and on my uh, video on the Lorentz field and how they uh, recharge the Lorentz field. So let's look at it differently. Here's the Earth. Here inside the Earth, we know we have electromagnetic energy. Tesla has told us that. Others have told us that. And that's in my videos. Here we have the po a positive pole of the magnetic field of the Earth. And here we have the negative pole of the magnetic field of the Earth. Or it could be reversed. And then here in between, these red dots represent the magnetic flux, the magnetic flow of energy. I'm sure you've all done or seen those science lab experiments where you put down metal filings on a table and you hold a magnet over it and it forms into these lines which look very much like this, almost exactly like this. So then up here, um, in the uh, interpretation given by mainstream archaeology, this represents the mountains holding up the sky and the sun. Well, I think rather what we're looking at here is this is the pyramids on the east side of the Nile, and this is the pyramids on the west side of the Nile. And then, of course, the Nile goes between them. And I explain in my videos how these connected pyramids on each side uh, tap into the water, which is, uh, which is energized by sunlight. So these uh, spheres also represent the sun energizing the water, energizing the earth, electromagnetic energy. It's really probably all the same if we understood it properly. So then we have the pyramids on the east and west side generating this huge amount of electromagnetic energy signified by the sun by the huge magnet here and then signified by the energy flowing even under the Nile between them. And then of course all these dots represent magnetic energy. So then the pyramids then take this energy and they spill it out uh, they shoot it in, uh, in, uh, into con in concentrated electromagnetic uh, particle beams into the upper atmosphere, into the magnetosphere, into the Lorentz field to strengthen it so that the next time the uh, solar, cyclic solar plasma waves hit, it's deflected. And that's what deflects it, are the uh, electromagnetic particles. Probably 10 to 20, 50 years before they know the next one's about to hit, about every 11,000 11, years, they turn on the pyramids and they start pumping the, the uh, magnetosphere full of more electromagnetic particles. Now, if this were water, as conventional archaeology says, then you wouldn't flow all over the Earth because there are areas of land. If it were a magnetic flow in the upper atmosphere, then you would see it flowing all around the Earth. And if this were water, you wouldn't see it flowing in the middle of the Earth. You would see electromagnetic field flowing in the middle of the Earth. And finally, kind of on a side note, <clears throat> these men all standing here, I think they represent priests of the sacred fire. Um, but that's a little bit esoteric and a little bit not germane with what I'm talking about here today. So I'm going to let that go for now. But this is my theory on what I think this image really truly means. And uh, I think um, that's probably it. And this actually popped into my mind about 20 minutes ago. Well, that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and forward this video to all your friends. That's my history, and I'm sticking to it.